18 ever on the so it's really incredibly uh, Somebody, somewhere, I can't remember everywhere, I read up in. Why do. No, or are we on first or second cut, or third cut, or fourth cut? Pit, unfortunately, still on second cut. As our year, as I said, has not gone quite well. Last year, where quite a lot of people had a really bad year, we had a really good year. This year, um, most people have a really good year, we have a really bad year. Just the way swings around roundabouts go sometimes. Uh, another one, a lad, somewhere in Scotland I think, said he made some late hay in Brown Wales and they've been heating up, heating up and heating up and uh, what do we do? So I don't know if you leave them out, uh, we don't leave them out anymore. Uh, as I've said in the past with our shed, because our sheds, uh, my old man and my grandfather built a shed might have been the wrong way around where, where it's pulling shed. But it catches a lot of wind. Um, it points uh, northeast southwest and it often catches prevailing winds so it acts a bit like a wind tunnel. We found that that's helped us quite a bit in a sense of like just constantly taking heat away from whales. Uh, again this year we have had a little bit heating but if you make it late hay well, we won't make hay now, but the last batch we cut a bit a load of hay. But when making late hay, we always find that you've just, just got to turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it. But I know those of you in the US, Australia, you don't have to turn it and turn it and turn it. Because you have got, it's very hot and you've got low humidity. Because you've got high humidity, um, you've also got to make sure when bailing what the humidity of the day is, especially late on in the year where it doesn't feel like it, but quite often there can be like a, a dampness to the air. Well, if you bail that to a bale, you're effectively bailing moisture into the bale, even, even if we think it's dead dry here in the UK. Um, it's just things that, to think about. Because once, if there is any humidity or you bail through the afternoon, you go in the evening, you've got a bit of a dew, any remote bit of dew that is bailed in, especially into a round bale, you're just, you're just like what's had a fuel the fire, like the posture that I do because you're trapping that moisture and all that moisture wants to do is get out and the only way to do that is to basically beat everything out in the air and also if you put the more moisture back in the plant the plant doesn't want to stay stable, wants to go off you have the whole effect so yeah we, again, don't need bales out, but one just to make sure you shed them uh, down is obviously to keep it out. Worst case scenario, if we put them in the shed sometimes, we'll take them back out again if they are heating up. Second cup, and not the second cup. 
say it's, uh, it's not screaming successively. Well, I'll chat back again in a minute when we get to one of the proper fields and explain to you guys what the heck you have to do with So, I'm back. Uh, cut edge of that field and the headland left the pit in the middle cut there top end of this field left all of this cut the whole field the other side that one's all right uh cut the corner over there but the rest of that field down there is crap as well why is it crap well if you see all this which has all been rooted see how loose this soil is now we have got a problem called a chafer bug there is one there's two there's three there's four look there's bloody oh i've just buried them all right so that there is a chafer grub look at the horrible horrible little things right now the ground here oh, another one it's freaking hundreds of them look how loose this ground now is yeah bloody good to come and in and reseed it though but anyway what i'm getting to so these grubs are causing us hell this year now we had a bit of this problem last year but we didn't actually know what it was um, we actually thought the mowers at the time of pitching. So, a bit of apology to Crow. Not total apology, because I still wasn't happy with the last Crow mowers. We thought the Crow mowers were pitching the bulldozing. It wasn't. We were coming across areas like this with these chafer grubs, um, where the ground's all loose. Like if I come here now, see, this is even more so. And I, I can literally just dig straight down into the ground because the ground is so loose so these chafer grubs are very high in protein they are absolutely loved by foxes badgers and birds so yeah this here is a little patch i'm going to take you somewhere in a minute which is going to blow most of your minds uh, we're not the only ones having a problem down here with this. We've had heard that uh, a couple of our neighbours have got a problem with this. Uh, someone we have done some contracting for before in the past has phoned us up and said, have you ever heard of this? And it ironically uh, just happened that we did. And we're tr all trying to figure out how to get rid of this. Now, those of you who know what a leather jacket is, see here. Because they're eating the roots as well. I'll come back to the leather jackets in a minute. See, another patch, another one, two, three. I'll just take you down there. So you see four, five, they're, they're literally everywhere. It's supposed to be, as our agronomist said, too late for them now, right? So we, now where I was going with the leather jackets, before I completely get digressed. Leather jackets, the spray that used to kill them, you can't use anymore, which ironically is the same spray that will kill these. You obviously can't spray these whilst we're in the ground, but when they turn into the beetle, which is a little brown, orange beetle, hang on, we'll do some magic here. Right, so the beetle looks like this. And now you're back to me. Um, with that, the spray is now banned, so it can't be used. Now, why am I leaving all the field? Well, we can't have soil con con contamination in our products. So I have just mowed this piece here, and I saw I was getting a little bit close to little areas. From the tractor cab, I can see like um, yellowy spots where the grass's roots have been eaten so much that the grass is basically effectively dying. Um, and this is the problem. So because this all comes so loose, 
but I'm, I'm literally look grass grass with no roots can you see that it's they've effectively just destroyed the whole root system but like here I can literally one thing they haven't destroyed is the root of the Danny line that's a bit annoying but see there's, 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 there's thousands of them I don't even have to work that hard I'm gonna have to spin you back around again so about here across is where I've come too far over right so they're in here if I get down in here right now anyone that is used to growing loads of grass you know how solid your root or your turf should be see there's bloody millions of there. look i can literally just pull the whole turf layer away look i've just dug that little hole in minutes well seconds even look just 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 literally lifting lifting stuff away right so that's this i don't know if you guys can tell but can you see the difference here of the grass slightly dying wilting well that just sort of gives me i just literally lift lift it no root left yeah no root left solutions well we've got an agronomist looking to find out if there's any sprays so if there are any sprays we will then be able to spray the beetles obviously can't spray the grubs so if we could get the point we could kill the beetle which is above ground that would be absolutely brilliant um the field we're going to go cut in a minute is a field that we had this in last year but we didn't know what it was so again as i said before i was blaming the mowers spent a day or an half half an afternoon being livid constantly resetting the mowers so they weren't pitching weren't uh, turfing ground um obviously as we've said it wasn't that so we went through that field with the areas which the tumor soil contaminated the grass we destroyed all that up broke that all up with um flail topper we went quite deep with the flail topper so the flail topper was effectively almost acting like a robot now fingers crossed uh if if big if here if that has worked brilliant we're just gonna, we're literally gonna top everything okay we've got more than enough bales for this year um hay wise no but we always end up buying a bit of hay anyway so that's not a problem haylage wise we've got loads of haylage left right um i'm still processing haylage from the year before okay so we're fine on that uh, but the biggest thing is we've got to get rid of these things now we're going to go through the topper uh, the agronomist said what they really hate is being involved so we're going to then go over everything and roll everything as well um, squash them but the rolling is mostly just getting the roots pressed back down to the grass root takes but I'm just walking to a field now which has So this is, was, was been the optimum word, or has been one of our better performing fields constantly. Never received it, it was permanent pasture. Yes, loads of dandelions have come up, mostly due to this problem. But literally, you can just rub grass away which is depressing and then the soil is that you can see them as well like again still in the ground and the soil is just just so gone so soft and crumbly but just see the little area I just opened up there grass is Grass is screwed. 
That's just dead dead. Don't matter if you roll the roots down or whatever. But again here, literally just hardly any effort. Just pull the grass back. We got moss problem here as well because, well, this. Never usually have moss in fields. Having a lawn every now and again, but not here. So this is all going to get topped really quite aggressively topped and another reason why the power harrow is coming out of play i know we haven't looked at it yet um but this is a perfect possible um plan of action maybe because put power harrow through it then we'll kill all the little bastards uh they don't like being in cultivation ground now the one problem we have is we don't really do a lot of cultivation but we are going to have to do some serious reseeding um and well these little grubs can live in the ground for up to four years or they can hang around an area for four years and as i've said before uh those in our local area those of you who know um you do, or obviously not far from us um if you've got such things let us know if anyone's ever had this before let us know what you did um again obviously at the moment can't spray we have got an agronomist looking to see if there is a spray that is still available and then we will spray the beetles out before this happens next year because uh this is nearly spreading a hundred 120 30 acres um some fields i've managed to cut round bits but if we cut through that it just it'll just pull soil up into into a swore especially as coming in and raking it it's just going to drag it all in so that is the problem we are facing it's a bit of a bitch to say the least a really bit of a bitch up to this point in the video, if you haven't yet done so, please hit the subscribe. We may need all the subscribes we can get, and thumbs up. Need of just being able to sustain farming with <laughs> YouTube advert income, possibly, because there are lots of problems we can fix. So this is the field which was the worst field of it last year. Obviously, this year we've got it a lot worse than else, but. Basically, from that telegraph or that telegraph pole there, this whole section here, where my finger's sort of going down to about where I am, so it's about, I don't know, 12 rows up, that was all just trashed. So it's looking a lot better this. Now, like, not telling anyone to suck eggs, because this is an absolute fluke or for what we did. Um, because we i come through cut the grass, the turf had gone in the grass, we obviously couldn't bale that. So we just went through the topper to mulch it and put it all back down. Um, and then we just left it. We didn't even roll it then. And obviously the grass has come back uh, and the damn chafers are gone, right? Now there is, there is something else that will get rid of chafer grubs which is uh, a type of bug called nematode. Nematode, I think I said it right. Um, but if you do the costing of that, it's about a grand for a football pitch, right? And then that type of the nematode, which is a type of bug, basically lasts a year and it dies off. Um, so you know, that's a very expensive way to do it. Now, if we can do what we want to do with the toppers because they seem to hang around quite shallow in the in the soil so just by going through with a topper what we found last year was we dropped the topper right down so she was turfing okay but with a flail topper you get a little bit of suction a little bit of updraft if that makes sense um so we're fingers crossed we're thinking either we destroyed them with a the topper 
all the birds and something absolutely ate every single one of them. Either way, we could try it. Um, but that, that is, that is the big headache we've got of 2021. It is basically ended second cut early. So, which is, it's kind of good to a sense. But this effectively is the last field cut for 2021. I'm happy but sad at the same time because this year seems to have gone like an absolute flash. Anyway, I'm going to get down home because now I've got to go back to the factory. done harvest as well but it is what it is so on the last fields now hopefully we'll be bathing tomorrow fingers crossed but who knows with this weather it's going to be bright sunshine today and it's not it's drab here's what it is and we haven't wanted, we haven't been able to cut what we wanted to cut because as Justin has explained about these bloody grubs now, I'm not going to go on too much about that because Justin probably explained to you anyway. So, it's down to us now to figure out what we're going to do to get rid of them as there is no sprays. I mean, in theory, they shouldn't actually be around this time of year, to be honest. But they are. So, we've got to put up with that. Choose our fields wisely because it's just like someone's gone through a cultivator, which you've probably seen anyway. So, there's going to be a lot of topping from now really a lot of topping which isn't a bad thing anyway because as we've seen in pre previous videos and we'll explain more when we're doing it we're putting the green fertilizer back into the ground anyway so it's not the end of the world to be quite honest it's just a pain more than anything it's getting to the bottom of it and stopping it for next year so yeah there we go so that's that's it from me really I'm gonna finish these fields and then it's, you've guessed it, it's turkey time, ladies and gentlemen. It's turkey time. I've got to make sure my turkeys are still living. I'm going to give them a quick feed and a quick, so you might, we might see them, or you might see them in a different video. Who knows? But anyway, if you haven't done so, please, could you subscribe? Give this video a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment, do it below. And if you want to see more of me and Justin, we are on Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it from me. I'm gonna carry on topping. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. So cheers. <laughs>